Okay, looks like we are streaming live and we are ready to begin whenever you are, Commission President Rocky Smith. All right, um, I will open the meeting, the regular city commission meeting for um, January 3rd, um, 2021. And uh, we will start with the roll call. Commissioner Denise McGriff. Present. Commissioner Rachel Lyle Smith. Here. I'm just letting uh, Commissioner Frank O'Donnell into the Zoom, so give him a second here to join. Okay, Commissioner Frank O'Donnell, we're doing the roll call and you're up. Here. All right, and Commission President Rocky Smith. Here. All right, a um, couple of things before we get started. First of all, we, we've typically, normally when I look at the agenda, it's very straightforward, but I have a few questions this evening. Um, First of all, we've been usually um, skipping the flag salute in the virtual world um, just because we aren't very good at syncing um, that. <laughs> so I think we'll um, skip that. The second part um, on the agenda is ceremonies, proclamations, and presentations. At our last meeting, we, we have decided um, one of the agenda items tonight is um, agenda item um, 7C that addresses some changes that we made with the agenda um, for going forward to the future. We acknowledged some of those in our last meeting and one of the changes was um, moving presentations separate from ceremonies and proclamations so that presentations would go following uh, citizen comments. Um, and so we'll, um, if there's um, a consensus to do that tonight, um, but what I was a little surprised in seeing um, in, and by memory, I wasn't sure about this. The other issue with the agenda was the discussion of moving the consent agenda to the front of the meeting. Um, I don't remember that conversation specifically. I thought it was more about, um, you know, kind of pulling items from the agenda at the beginning of the meeting, not necessarily approving the whole consent agenda at the meeting. Does anyone... Um, so basically, I want to know what that um, dialogue was or what we want to do tonight. Um, we'll be obviously be talking about that agenda item later on this evening, so we can wait to have that conversation then, I guess, if you want. Um, so I, with that, um, go ahead. I missed that. Sorry, Commissioner President Smith. It was Tony. I think, um, you know, I think part of the discussion was to pull up the consent agenda so that people who were waiting to see if anything was going to be pulled or approved off of it. But tonight there are only minutes. So I highly doubt anyone is hanging on the edge of right. the for the approval of the minutes. Uh, so you could probably wait until that conversation at 7 C. Yeah, I think let's let's do that. Then I feel better about that because I, I need to refresh my memory on that whole dialogue. Um, all right, so that will bring us to um, ceremonies and proclamations. And first up, 3A, new historic review board and planning commission members. Commission Oda. President Smith, I had my hand raised because you asked a question. Could I answer that for you? Well, um, yes, but we, I thought we were waiting until the agenda um, later on, but go ahead. You asked whether we'd had a discussion about it. We did, but we did not come to a consensus. So that's my recollection of it from my notes. I knew we had a discussion about it. I didn't remember the outcome of it. So Right. We did not make an outcome. Okay. So thank you. All right. So um, 3A, New Historic Review Board and Planning Commissioner Members Oath of Office. So Commissioner Smith, you'll go ahead and read through that with them. So you'll go ahead and administer that to them and then they can insert their name and the appropriate, unless you wanna do planning commission and HRB separate or you can run them all together and they can insert the appropriate board. Um, I was not aware I was doing that this evening, but um, Sorry, sir. I will, I, I have it here. Um, hold on a second.
Um, yeah. Um, well, we probably we need to do them individually, though. Anyway, don't we? Or you, you want to do? You could probably do. I think the first one was planning commissioners. Yep. Why don't you do the two planning commissioners? That way, they can just insert their name, and then you can have them recite planning commission, and then we'll do historic review board after that. Does that work? Okay. okay. All right. So starting with the planning commission, we have two um, appointments to planning commission. It is Daphne West and Lisa Novak. So if they're there, I see them on their screen. Um, you need to raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. I, Lisa I Daphne Novak. West. Do solemnly swear and affirm that I support the Constitution of the United States. <laughs> Do solemnly, solemnly swear, swear and that I support the Constitution <laughs> of the United States. And the laws of the state of Oregon. And the laws of the state, and of, the laws Oregon. Of, the state of Oregon. Along with the Oregon City Municipal Charter. Along, along with, with the Oregon, Oregon City, City Municipal, Municipal Charter. Charter. And code. And, and code. code. I will respect and support the Planning Commission bylaws. I will respect, I will respect and, support and support the Planning Commission bylaws. bylaws. Policies, operations, and decisions. Policies, policies operations, operations, and decisions. And decisions. I recognize that a board member has no legal authority. I recognize that no board member has, has any legal, legal authority. authority. And as an, as an, an individual, um, excuse me, as an individual and that decisions can be made only by a majority vote of the planning commission. As an individual. An individual. And Rocky, we, or Mayor uh, Rocky, we need some help on this one. Okay, so I'll go back. I have, I've, I'll go back. I recognize that that a board member has no legal authority as an individual. I recognize that a board member has no legal authority as an individual. And that decisions can be made only by a majority vote of the planning commission. And decisions, and decisions can, can only, only be made, made by the majority, majority vote of the planning, of the planning commission. commission. I will faithfully and honorably, honorably perform the duties of the office for which I am about to assume. I will faithfully, faithfully and honorably like perform the duties the of the office, office I, that I am about to presume. Assume. All right. That is it. Congratulations. Thank you. <laughs> My wedding vows weren't as difficult. Um, well, also, I'll, I will apologize tonight. Um, I just got um, through. Um, I've been on Zoom since eight this morning, nonstop um, oh. with school. No, no breaks, really. Um, and I just had a major like coughing fit, like right before we started this meeting. So I'm like trying to just um, get back focused. So I apologize. <laughs> <coughs> All right. Um, and I, I thought we would have um, the judge doing this this evening. So, um, all right, so now we will move on to um, the oath of office for the Historic Review Board. We have three members, Carrie Crook, Paul Edgar, Sabrina Ferry, and I will try to break this up better. Hopefully they um, have Paul, it up on their screen. <laughs> what? I said, hopefully they have it up on your screen. It was in the meeting packet. Use your oath, so that oh, that's the problem. Help they you get through have, it because I don't think don't Daphne have, and Lisa actually got it in front of them. They don't have no, the document we, in front of them. Yeah, we don't. Yeah, um, it's, in the, it's in the that? meeting packet. <laughs> Katie, can we share it? Yes, I will get that up. Just one moment. May make it go a little bit easier for the other folks. <laughs> I felt bad for Lisa and Daphne. <laughs> this, this virtual world isn't working so well in some, some respects. Well, 
While we're waiting, congratulations to you both, though. <laughs> Thank you. Da Daphne is frozen like this. Thank you. <laughs> Okay. All right, um, Carrie, Paul, and Sabrina, I hope we're ready for this. <laughs> All right, um, raise your right hand and repeat after me. I state your name. Paul Edgar. Carrie Crook. Do solemnly swear and affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the bylaws of uh, the state of Oregon and the laws of the state of Oregon. Do solemnly swear and affirm that I will support the Constitution of the United States and the law of the state of Oregon. Along with Oregon City Municipal Charter and Code. Along with the Along Oregon, with Oregon City Municipal, Municipal Charter and Code. Charter and code. I'm going to do it real fast. Do solemnly swear and affirm that I will support the Constitu Constitution of the United States and the bylaws of the state of Oregon, along with the Oregon City Municipal Codes, Charter and Codes, and I respect and support the Historic Review Board and Planning Commission bylaws and policy. Operations and decisions and recognize that I'm an individual member and has no legal authority and that the decisions can be only by a majority vote at the Historic Review Board, meaning I faithfully and honorably perform these duties of the office for which I am assuming. Okay, you know, Paul, I still have to do that for everyone else now. Okay, I'm sorry. I will respect and support the Historic Review Board Planning Commission bylaws, policies, operations, and decisions. I will respect, respect and support, support the Historic, Historic Review, Review Board, Board Planning Commission bylaws, policies, policies operations, operations, and decisions. And decisions. I recognize that an individual member has no legal authority. I recognize that no individual member has legal authority. And that decisions can be made only by majority vote at a public historic review board slash planning commission meeting. That's historic review board meeting. And that decisions can be made only by majority vote at a public historic review board meeting. I will faithfully and honorably perform the duties of uh, the office for which I am assuming. I will faithfully and honorably perform the duties of the office for which I am assuming. Congratulations on getting through that. <laughs> we did good. Oh. All right. Um, thank you for everyone's patience on that. Um, all right. So we're moving on to um, mayoral appointments, city boards and commissions. Um, this is a topic I wanna to talk about a little bit. Um, we have two appointments um, that I'm gonna be making tonight. Um, one is for a library board, Elizabeth Zintner appointed to library board for a three year term. Um, January 1st, 2021 to uh, December 31st, 2023. Elizabeth was um, unanimously recommended to um, us by the um, library board. Um, and so I felt like that was an easy appointment to make. Um, Delta Anderson appointed to the Oregon City 2040 um, uh, project advisory team. Um, for a position to serve as advocate for persons with physical disabilities. This was a position that was needed to be filled um, and there was one um, interested party, Delta, who applied for that. Um, and so I felt that that was a good appointment as well. Um, there is more appointments and vacancies on various uh, committees, um, one of which is budget committee, 
There are four openings on uh, the budget committee. Um, there are, uh, there's one opening on the um, enhancement grant program committee, two openings on park and rec advisory. Um, and let's see, transportation committee, it looks like two. Um, there, there is um, a deadline of February 15th. So those positions are open for applicants until then. Um, the one thing I would like to do, especially in the case of um, the budget committee is um, get some feedback from the commission on how to approach those. And then I wanna also check in with Katie if that would be kind of the, if she has the same concerns uh, for the other positions that we have for the, the um, budget committee. And the budget committee concerns was this. Um, my hope was that um, in filling the positions for the budget committee that we would be able to wait until we have a new mayor to do that. Um, the problem with that, however, is that the, um, the mayor will probably not be sworn in until the first or second meeting of April. Um, we need to have a budget committee um, interviewed and in place for the 1st of May for our budget process. And so that means that the timeline uh, doesn't fit with waiting for the new mayor to be appointed and to make those appointments. So that being the case, I didn't feel um, that that was something I wanted to um, tackle on my own without a discussion of the, the entire commission and get some feedback on how we wanna approach that. Um, so if anyone has any input on how to approach some of these, um, but first of all, I'd like to ask Katie, is that same concern of turnaround for all of those committees or just for the budget committee? Um, really, it's just for the budget committee, but um, I guess depending upon what you guys decide to do with the budget committee, it would be nice, I'm sure, to fill out the rest of those um, committees. We do have an application deadline of February 15th, and so I believe all the staff for those boards and committees were planning on conducting interviews after that date. Um, as quickly as possible. I know that the Enhancement Grant Committee was planning on having a meeting next week, and I don't know if they had any other future meetings planned prior to the regular meeting in June. So it'd be nice to have uh, that representative be a part of that discussion um, and so on and so forth. All right. Um, So there's some possible scenarios here, um, but I'll ask the commission what their thoughts are on this before I speak to that. Um, Commissioner McGriff, do you have? Yes, I, I think that uh, the proposal to move things forward uh, because of the timing issues, I have no problem with us moving ahead with, these, with uh, these re the review of these potential applicants. Well, the problem is what we, how we go about that. Either um, the interviews take place and we all watch them. Yes, and have that's what I'm suggesting. Them. Okay. Yes, the interviews take place. We take, we, we review the, the people, we get them appointed, we move forward. I see no reason to delay this or wait. We got work to do. Other comments on this? All right, um, to clarify, Commissioner McGriff, are you saying that um, we as an entire, your, your preference is us as an entire commission, watch all the interviews, um, give input to staff on direction or give input for me to make the appointments on those? I'm suggesting that we move forward with the deadline that has been set. Um, if we have to amend it because we are reaching out to people, that's a second step. We get in, we sit in on the interviews, we move forward and get the appointments made so that you can, you can uh, make appointments after we've chatted with you about it. Okay, but Commissioner uh, Lyles. Critical. 
Thank you. So I don't believe Commissioner McGriff is answering your question. So I'll just I'll just say um, you can move forward with um, I, I support moving forward um, because we have critical reasons that we need to move forward, which is the same similar situation that I experienced in December. Uh, we had reasons for getting folks on board um, as soon as possible. Um, and um, I completely support you as commission president to uh, carry out your duties to make the appointments. And I'm happy to provide comments if I participate in the interview process. Commissioner O'Donnell, anything? I'll agree with Commissioner Lyle Smith. However you want to proceed, but I believe we should get it done. Whether we have a second round table or whether we just submit comments as we did before, whatever your pleasure is, but we need to get it done. Give these people a chance to get in step. Okay, so um, correct me if I'm wrong, but I'm hearing that we will basically be following the same process that we followed um, at the end of the year with the commission president um, taking input from the commission and making the appointments. Is that correct? I gave it a thumbs up. Yeah, sure. I saw two. I didn't see okay. what I have. Is that correct, Commissioner McGriff? That's correct. Okay. All right. Commission, Commission President Smith, can I just clarify, is that process just for the budget committee or are you, would you like to follow that for the budget committee, the enhancement grant, the Parks and Advisory Committee and the Transportation Advisory Committee? It sounds like that would be the process for all of the way that I was hearing it. Okay. Okay. Um, my computer is freezing up a little bit. So um, we're going to move on now to um, this would put us at uh, presentations, uh, excuse me, com citizen comment. And then we'll do the, the historic review board after that. So is there any citizen comment for this evening? Yes, there is. Um, we have uh, several citizen comments here. So it looks like uh, Pavel, is it, I don't want to pronounce the last name wrong, but Probosco. Uh, I believe you're on the line. So I'm going to ask you to unmute by pressing star six. And if you could please begin by stating your first and last name and city of residency for the record, and then you will have up to three minutes to speak. Pavel Probosco and Oregon City. Good evening, everyone. I'd like to share a story regarding um, cats we have um, here at my condominium where a um, couple of the residents are hoarding, hoarding them. And unfortunately, it's affecting our uh, health and safety because these cats are uh, on the roof. They're um, basically pooping, vomiting, peeing in front of my door, backyard. Also, there's about a condominium of 20 units along with apartments and then a retirement home. So pretty much we're in a 360 radius where this uh, particularly health issue is ongoing. I personally have reached out to social media Oregon City Code Enforcement, and we are working, um, I'm more actually working with them um, every week to try to get this uh, situation solved. One of the biggest things that I have um, done research on is creating an ordinance for the Oregon City. Because of the situation, um, there's nothing that can prevent anyone from owning so many cats in this particular case. Um, I estimate at least 24 cats for these couple of units that have them. And in my research, I looked at Multnomah County and basically they have full on services where you can report any issues with cats trespassing, particularly um, vomiting into your backyard or pooping or anything like that. But what it really comes down to, um, what we're experiencing here in my um, condominium is literally horrible 
and I hope that we can um, all work together, um, especially just after um, reaching out to Commissioner Rachel Lyle Smith and Denise, we've already communicated on reality. Like this is not going to go away. And I hope that it does. And we can all um, create an ordinance in the end. Thank you so much. Thank you. And next we have uh, Mike Mitchell. And if Mike, if you could press star six and unmute yourself and then begin by stating your first and last name and city of residency for the record, please. Good evening, Commission President, Commissioners. My name is Mike Mitchell. I'm an Oregon City resident. Uh, thanks for the chance to speak to you tonight. Um, I do want to make clear that uh, I am, I do serve on the Planning Commission, but I'm speaking tonight for myself, not for the Commission, for the Planning Commission. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, you heard a request and granted uh, an appeal of a uh, fee for, uh, for an appeal by a, a group of neighbors uh, appealing a Planning Commission decision. And one of their justifications was they were not aware that there was such a fee. Um, my suggestion, just a small suggestion, in the script that's read before every quasi-judicial hearing, whether it's Planning Commission or the Historic Review Board or the City Commission, there's a paragraph in that script that talks about how you protect your right to appeal by, uh, by speaking up and getting an issue on the record. Uh, my suggestion would be that Mr. Kabeisman or, or Ms. Richter write another sentence or two that could be added in there to that script that's read at every hearing, uh, simply stating that except for a authorized neighborhood association, uh, there would be an appeal fee. So that does a couple of things. It gets everybody on notice right from the start that there is an appeal fee. Um, it also um, hopefully we'll avoid a situation again where someone wants to uh, have a waiver to that fee because they didn't know. You, of course, as a commission can still waive the fee, but at least we would know up front that everybody, uh, everybody was aware of it. Um, so that's, that, that's my suggestion. And then related to that, and my recollection is a couple of years ago, this may have been discussed, but I don't know what the bottom line was. And that is, can any neighborhood association file a no-cost appeal, or does it have to be the uh, neighborhood association where the project is located? Uh, and also, additionally, can the Citizen Involvement Committee make a no-cost appeal? Uh, and, and those questions kind of would, uh, in this particular case that you just heard, there was no active neighborhood association, um, but the question of whether or not which neighborhood association or the CIC kind of doesn't depend on whether or not there's an active neighborhood association. I, I, I think it would just be better before this kind of a situation comes up again that we clarify which neighborhood associations and whether or not the Citizen Involvement Committee can make a no-cost appeal. Uh, and then along with that, add that verbiage uh, to the legal statement, notifying everyone that there is an appeal fee. That's all I have. Thank you very much. All right, Katie, is there any more and, comments? Yeah, next we have uh, Dorothy or Dee Dee Dahlstred. So if Dee Dee could please press star six on her phone, begin by stating her first and last name and city of residency for the record. Commissioners, can you hear me? Yes. Thank you. Um, Commissioner President and commissioners, thank you very much for this opportunity. My name is Dorothy Dalsford. I live in Oregon City since 1975. After watching this retreat this last week, and I was extremely prideful of how hard you all worked. It was hard listening for six and a half hours, but it was very comprehensible. What I kept hearing was city identity, um, economic return on our investments, city parks and full transparency, and protecting our urban canopy. What I wanna focus on tonight is the Heritage Tree nomination stand at Park Place Park. Since the last PRAC meeting last week, last week if I'm not mistaken, um, it is still not on the city website. But that, during that meeting, as they were degrading the Heritage Tree stand as a whole, and were going to be selective of which trees they wanted to perceive in it, they um, let it be known that they are going to improve the unimproved Hiram Street 
that goes directly through the middle of the park, Park Place Park, and will kill these, threaten and kill these trees. What I'd like to do is read a few statements of people that worked on this heritage tree back from December 2019 when it was submitted. This is from Jerry Herman. We have personally reviewed the stature and heritage aspects of several Oregon white oaks located at Park Place Park in Oregon City. These trees are significant due to their large stature, probability that Native Americans utilize them for food sustenance. They are located at the Clackamas Rivershed where the natives would have gathered the nuts and forged for the beneficial forbs, other beneficial forbs such as camas, wild iris, and hazelnut, which we hope to replant in the evasive areas. These trees should certainly reach status of heritage due to the size, but more importantly, due to the bench Occupy wherein Native Americans and pioneers would have benefited from their seed and nut production. We hope you will support this heritage tree stand in its entirety. That was from Jerry Herman, who walked the property and we spoke about trails to be built all around the surrounding park. This is from Byron Boyce, who is also a tree expert, local tree expert. I'm writing about the row of six Atlas Theaters, Citrus Atlantica that are located at Park Place Park above the playground. These trees are likely to be over 100 years old. They appear to have originally been seedlings rather than grafted trees. Seedling atlas cedars vary from green to blue and reflective in the color range of the trees. There is no sign of graft unions, which would be obvious in the species. The trees are well spaced, allowing them to mature in a healthy fashion. There is one tree missing out of the road, judging by the spacing. The trees are at 10 foot in circumference at breast height measurement. These trees, the species is a native of high mountains of Morocco and Algeria and Northern Africa. Africa. Atlas cedar is closely related to the cedar of Lebanon mentioned in the Bible and is endangered species with the IUCN listing and has a very limited high island range where natural pollutions are now decreasing their species. The grouping of this type of tree is rare in an urban area, as normally only one is planted like at our city pool. This entire grouping is of exceptional size and impact, and few of this size exist, and even fewer in this type of grouping. Didi. I want to advocate for these ancient trees because they should not be sacrificed for one single lot. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Katie, is there any others? We do have one more. It's William Gifford. Uh, William, if you could please uh, press star six on your phone to unmute yourself and begin by stating your first and last name and city residency for the record. Mr. President and City Commissioners, my name is William Gifford. I live in Oregon City. Um, I'll, I'll be brief. Uh, a lot of attention, of course, is naturally being spoke uh, is being uh, spent on the uh, on the upcoming election in March for our mayor. But I want uh, I want everyone to be aware of the fact that there are some additional uh, there is an additional election coming up in May, and it can affect our city. And I think that uh, people ought to be aware. The, uh, for one thing, the uh, school district has four positions open, uh, and that's significant, but, uh, for, but they all have to live in Oregon City anyway. The fire district, however, has two positions open, and currently there is no representation of Oregon City, our county seat, on the fire district, on their board. I serve on their budget committee, and it perturbs me that there is not more of a voice for Oregon City on the fire district. Um, additionally, um, I would like to point out that there is only one woman on the fire district board, um, and I think it'd be a, a great opportunity for um, uh, for someone to step up and participate in that um, uh, in that opportunity. the The obligations are not severe, and I think it's a good way to uh, to uh, have an impact on your community. The um, I think that's probably all I need to say is if you need more information, Clackamas County uh, slash elections has all the information on those special special district elections that are coming up in May. Monday is the first day that, uh, that an individual can file. But if you're looking to make a difference, that's a place to step up. Thanks for your attention. 
All right, thank you. Um, was that it? I think that's everybody. Yes, that's all of the citizen comments, that's it. All right, so next we have um, Historic Review Board Annual Update. Laura, are you gonna introduce that? Yes, thank first? you. I'm, I'm pleased to introduce Grant. our 2021 Historic Review Board Chair, Grant Blythe. Hello, uh, City Commission. Uh, like Laura said, my name is Grant Blythe. Uh, this is my fifth year uh, starting on the Historic Review Board and i um, pleased to uh, give you a report for our activities for the last year of 2020. Uh, starting with our land use reviews, we completed five applications for new construction. Uh, two of those were in the Kanema National Historic District and three in the McLaughlin Conservation District. We reviewed two applications for alterations to uh, designated historic properties in the McLaughlin District. Uh, and finally, we reviewed two public projects, uh, which are La Terre Park and the Oregon Film Trail sign. Uh, finally, for applications, we had one application for demolition in the Kanema National Historic District. Uh, additionally, we provided design advice for two uh, potential projects still upcoming and happily uh, for the year 2020, we had no appeals for any decisions. Um, in addition to our land use review activities, uh, we completed a number of other um, number of, of actions. Uh, we granted $3,000 to three local preservation projects through the preservation grant program. Um, we awarded the 2020 Ruth McBride Powers Preservation Award to Carrie Freeman for her work on the CG Huntley House at 916 Washington Street. We reviewed the Buena Vista House National Register nomination. Uh, we discussed potential HRB policies for murals on historic buildings. Uh, 51 packets, uh, welcome packets were mailed out to new historic property owners. We started the uh, compatible change project to uh, revisit and revise the code for additions to non-contributing structures in the Laughlin Conservation District. Uh, and then uh, we welcome the three new HRB members that you swore in tonight. Very good. Um, is there any questions from the commission? Commissioner McGriff. Thank you, uh, Grant, for that very informative report. So what do you see as something that the Historic Review Board um, might need from the city or the city staff over the coming year? Uh, well, I believe for, for last week, we submitted a letter that we, we do feel there is a need to revisit some of the design guidelines. Uh, there are you know, some changes and, and things in both kind of larger development practices and in specific materials and kind of smaller issues that have changed in the time since those have been last revised. So some examples might be uh, more interest in certain development practices like the cottage housing code and how that applies to historic review. Um, you know, we have had at least one application in recent history where that came up and uh, without much precedent or, um, uh, or guidance in our design guidelines, that was a difficult decision for the board to make. Um, additionally, just other newer issues like solar panels, uh, certain new types of, you know, things with, um, you know, siding and windows and updated materials that are available on the market uh, are maybe not as clearly addressed as, as we would like them to be. So um, I do think that we would uh, in, like to have the commission support in, in revisiting some of those and uh, trying to uh, clarify them so to make the, the process serve the community um, as well as possible. Maybe Ms. Turway can answer this. I thought we updated the policies regarding solar panels. Yeah, we, I guess we, we do, we did complete that, that policy specifically. So um, I think, yeah, I think, I guess we are in probably good shape there. Thank you. All right, thank you so much. 
appreciate oh sorry commissioner rachel Smith. i just saw you the window was covered up there she has a question i think yes thank you um hi grant um i have um one comment and then one question uh first um i would say that i i would support any recommendations or requests um where for our support uh regarding how um Anything we can do to help the HRB in their decision-making process, if there's discretionary areas that seem to be causing issues, um, you know, if there's anywhere that we can make things really clear and helpful. I know, I know, um, I feel like with the guidance work that was done last year, it was all in an effort to try to improve that and make sure things were, were much more clear. So it just seems to be a contentious issue. Um, and so anything that we can do to um, help in, in that area. I know um, what I said on the interviews with the HRB um, applicants, um, a couple of them had ideas of, of how we could um, educate uh, historic homeowners and do some education campaigns and, and of some variety of things in the historic neighborhoods. I thought there were some great ideas there. So, um, I know that may be a little bit outside of maybe of what the HRB normally does, but I thought they were great ideas. So um, I would I would encourage and support uh, stuff like that. Um, my only question is um, if you or if you think that most of the HRB members were planning to attend the open house for next week for the compatible change project. Um, I'm not sure if it's been announced. I know I've I've put it out on my social media, but um, I'm hoping that some HRB members will participate. Uh, yes, I guess on the, uh, the, the first topic, uh, I appreciate that support and I'll make sure to uh, communicate to the rest of the board uh, your, your comments on that and, and we'll look at how we can pursue some of those, those goals. And then on the topic of the open house, uh, I'll also uh, pass along and I, I also hope that we'll um, be able to get a, a number of the board members able to attend that open house. Uh, Commissioner McGriff. Yes, I just, um, thank you, Grant. I had a question for staff. So when will the letter be going out to the property owners within the conservation district and the uh, Kenema National Register District? We've been able to get grant funding. And um, as you know, I feel it's very important that once a year they get reminded how wonderful their historic properties are and how we want to be good stewards of our properties. I'll have to touch base with uh, Kelly Reed, our historic planner, uh, but we did send out the, the welcome packets for new property owners um, as we do each year. All right, any other comments or questions? All right, Grant, thank you. Yes, thank you for having me. All right, now we're on to agenda item number five, adoption of the agenda. Is there any changes that anyone wants to make with the agenda? Commissioner McGriff? Sure, um, I'd like to go ahead and uh, suggest that um, because it's just the minutes, if we wanted to get, get uh, dispensed with the consent agenda, um, I, would, I would love to make a motion to do that. Okay, go for it. Um, I move that we um, accept the minutes of, of uh, November 10th, November 18th, the November 18th work session and the December 16th regular meeting as written. Is there a second? There are all second. <laughs> okay, moved and seconded. Seconded by Commissioner Lyle Smith. Yeah. Um, so I'm going to start with the roll call here. Commissioner Denise McGriff. Aye. Commissioner Rachel Lau Smith. Aye. Commissioner Frank O'Donnell. Aye. And Commission President Rocky Smith. Aye. Motion passes. All right. With, without seeing any other changes, I think we're on to uh, public hearings. Um, and we have 6A, first reading of ordinance number 21-1005, an emergency annexation. All right. About to start the slideshow. Can you see the screen? 
Yes. Okay. Uh, tonight, uh, Commission President Smith and Commissioners, we have an emerging annex, emergency annexation proposal uh, for DLUA 20-17 and 2001. Uh, this is an emergency, emergency annexation. Um, the applicant came in because they had a failed sewer and uh, state law requires that if you are within 300 feet of a city sewer line and inside the um, urban uh, growth boundary, you need to move to connect to city sewer. So our comprehensive plan policy 11-13 says to confine urban public facilities and services to the city limits, except where allowed for safety and health reasons in accordance with state law. So this proposal, uh, uh, it qualifies as emergency annexation and as such, um, there is no planning commission hearing and it goes straight to you this evening as a city commission hearing. The subject site is 19242 Beaver Creek Road. It's about 0.9 acres uh, and you can see um, that is really an island in the county today. It's one of the last properties in that upper part of Beaver Creek near the college that is in Clackamas County. So this annexation request, uh, as I said, is due to a failed septic. Uh, there are sewer facilities on Beaver Creek Road, and this is an application just for an annexation and not a zone change. So with the approval of this annexation, the property retains it's FU 10 County Zone, which is a 10 acre holding zone. Therefore, the applicant is only allowed to retain the single family housing use that is on the site today. Uh, the future zoning, however, at the time an application for a zone change is proposed by either the applicant or the city, uh, the future zoning is campus industrial. The site is part of the Thimble Creek or Beaver Creek concept plan. You can see that arrow points to that small parcel at the top part of the concept plan boundary. But as I said, um, as conditioned in this application with an annexation with no zone change, uh, the applicant, the site use will not change or intensifying, including not limited to land division, new structures or additions to existing structures. And so this evening, uh, staff has uh, a recommendation to approve the first reading of the emergency annexation of the 0.9 acre property at 19242 Beaver Creek Road. I'm available to answer any questions you may have. <clears throat> um, Commissioner McGriff. Yes, um, sorry, Christina, but I wanna clarify what you said. Your opening statement said that they had a failed sewer. I think you meant- oh, Failed septic. Thank septic you. tank, because if they had yes. failed sewer, yeah. I was very alarmed by that. Yeah, they had a failed septic, which they, yes. comma failed required them system. to hook up to a uh, city sewer. So what are they doing right now? They are hooking up. They've With this annexation, they can hook up to the city sewer system. And that requires... I know. What, are they, what are they doing right now? That it's, it's failed enough that they can still use it till they can get hooked no. up? For Oregon City, um, as they've applied for an annexation, they were allowed to move forward with their sewer permit application because they've applied and have a complete annexation application. In the staff report, if for some reason the city commission chooses not to move forward with the annexation, uh, they would be required to still pay uh, to hook up to city services. But in this case, they may would have they would have to be an out of at a city service rate. So staff recommends, because for all the reasons in the staff report, uh, this is an island in the middle of the city. It is staying uh, FU 10 until such time uh, that the applicant comes in to request the zone change to uh, come into the city, stay the FU 10 zone and, and be a city resident with city sewer. So they would be requesting a comp plan and zone change if they wanted to change. So, well, they have a comprehensive plan zone change because okay. they're, we've adopted the campus industrial comprehensive right. okay. plan. It would be if so they came me, in for a zone change, right. they would request a zone change from FU10 to CI campus industrial. Okay, so let me- Which let, they are not doing this evening. Let me clarify again, because I don't think I heard you correctly, was that you said that upon their application for annexation, they also filed for permits to hook up to the sewer? Correct. Thank you. So that was happening concurrently, that they could not move forward O'Donnell. until they submitted a complete application and paid for their annexation. 
Commissioner O'Donnell. I have a question that's not specific to this. I read the report, I understand this completely, but my question is, given the 300 foot extensions that we are called upon to do, in the event that occurs and the infrastructure is not in place, like the main line, who bears those costs? If, and this, and I, I will answer the, the answer the question, I'll allow uh, John Lewis if he has uh, any additional comments, but from what I've understood, if you are within 300 feet of access to city sewer, you must extend that to your property. If you cannot access it within 300 feet, you're allowed to apply for and obtain a new septic system and retain, in the, retain staying in the county. But the question was, if the infrastructure, like the main lines do not exist and we have to reach out 300 feet, again, not referring to this particular mm -hmm. annexation, who bears those costs? The applicant does. Okay, thank you. All right, um, do, I'll need to open the public hearing. Is there any co public comment or is the applicant here? The applicant is here this evening. Does the applicant have anything to present? Yeah, the um, way that it's operating right now, I uh, have uh, River City pump who, who the- Who's uh, talking please? Hello, can you hear me? Yes. yes uh, oh, who, who I'm is, sorry. Is this, is, this is Andy Barney, the owner of the property. So the way it's working right now is uh, about twice a month, probably we have city sewer, uh, city river city pump out what won't um, go down the leach lines approximately every other week or something like that. Just to keep a from condemning the house. Okay, thank you. Um, is there any other citizen comment on this item? All right, hearing there, nothing. There are oh. no other citizen comments for this item, sorry. Okay. Um, thank you and um, I'll close the public hearing. Um, Commissioner McGriff. Yeah, I'd like to move the first reading of ordinance number 21-1005, an emergency annexation of 0 0.9 acres at 19242 Beaver Creek Road, file GULA 20-00017, annexation file 20-0001. Second. Okay, moved and seconded. And so first reading is ordinance number 21-1005, an ordinance of the city of Oregon City approving emergency annexation proposal number GLUA 20-0017, AN 20-001, and approving the annexation of certain property located at 19242 Beaver Creek Road into the city of Oregon City. Okay, call for the vote. Commissioner Denise McGriff. Aye. Commissioner Rachel Lyle Smith. Aye. Commissioner Frank O'Donnell. Aye. Commission President Rocky Smith. Aye. Motion passes. All right. Now we're moving into general business 7A, second reading of ordinance number 21 1001. And I believe this is Community Development Director Laura Turway. Thank you very much. Um, staff recommends approval of the second reading. We don't have a presentation tonight, but we're here to answer any questions you may have. All right, any questions or comments by the commission before we move on this item? <laughs> then put your hand down. <laughs> Let me get my cards out. So I can Okay, do we have a motion? Yes, I'll move to approve the second reading of ordinance number 21-1001, amendments to the water master plan. Second. Okay. Ordinance number 21-1001, an ordinance of the city of Oregon City adopting revisions to the water master plan as an ancillary document to the comprehensive plan. Commissioner Denise McGriff. Can you please state it? Katie, do you need a verbal? Yeah, yeah can you please verbally? Aye. 
<laughs> Thank you. Uh, Commissioner Rachel Lau Smith. Aye. Commissioner Frank O'Donnell. Aye. And Commission President Rocky Smith. Aye. Motion passes. All right. 7B, second reading of ordinance number 21-1003. And Laura. Thank you very much. Uh, again, we don't have a presentation. We're just asking for approval of the second reading. This one's a little bit funny because we're asking approval for the second reading as well as a continuance. And Christina, can you remind me of the continuance date? Was it March 3rd or April 7th? It is April 7th. Thank you. We're here to answer any questions you may have. Why are we asking for a continuance? This is the package of Public Works Code amendments. And so we're gonna, we broke it, the large package into small bites. So we're going to, this is the first bite and then we'll continue the hearing. So we'll look at a different section of proposed amendments for Public Works. Commissioner McGriff, you're on mute. <laughs> Commissioner McGriff. <laughs> Thank you, Commissioner O'Donnell. Welcome. Is this the one that's going to help us move the sidewalk issues and obstructions in the sidewalk issue forward? Correct. Uh, the All of the code changes package one, two, and three are all part of the legislative file. So in this situation, with the second reading of package one, that concludes that package but the public hearings need to keep continuing until right. we adopt all the packages. So this motion just continues the public hearing of the L file. Right, thank you. All right, we need a motion for that. I'll move the second reading of, of ordinance number 21-003 and I'll let Bill read all the rest of it. Does that include a continuance and to the, April 7th? And including the continuance of the remainder of the package until April 9th, did you say? 7th, please. Seven. Thank you. Hey, Laura, the staff report says to continue to March 3rd. So just, are we certain on the date? Do we have the motion right? Okay, so the staff report, ignore that. <laughs> okay, <I> just, <laughs> uh, I'll second then. A ordinance number 21-1003, an ordinance of the City of Oregon City amending the Oregon City Municipal Code, Title 12, Street, Sidewalks, and Public Places, Title 13, Public Services, and Title 17, Zoning. Commissioner um, Denise McGriff. Aye. Commissioner Rachel Lyle Smith. Aye. Commissioner Frank O'Donnell. Aye. Commission President Rocky Smith. Aye. Motion passes. All right, we're on to 7C resolution number 21-09, adoption of the Fifth Amendment to the commission, City Commission Rules of Procedure. And that's me. So as you know, commissioners, uh, we brought the Rules of Procedure before you on January 12th at the work session, and there were several amendments and edits to that. And then I know you discussed a little bit of it this the beginning of this meeting. And so I would like to uh, open that discussion again for, for more of um, what we can get fixed on your rules of procedure or any edits that you have and want to discuss. All right, any um, comments or questions on this or changes? I don't have any. I got to about page um, seven in my reading before um, I had to get into our meeting. So, um, Commissioner Lyle Smith. Thank you, Commission President. So, um, I was just going to uh, bring us to page one where Katie has a question. She says she wasn't sure there was consensus on what to do with that sentence. And I can understand how she, how she could feel that way because I remember that conversation being all over the place. Um, I know I felt like everything in the rules and procedures was just for the commission, even if it maybe had an, a, historically had a, a different intended purpose. So, um, but I don't, I, I, I'm struggling with the, with the idea of 
how it's how it's how it acts and it's in what is the intention of this to me even the title says city commission rules of procedure so i i really feel like this document is everything for the city commission and i didn't um and even in the first um, sentence anytime it references commission throughout the rest of the document that first sentence with commission in, in parentheses means the city commission so therefore if this document is meant to apply to any other committee or board or whatever, then that first sentence would need to be changed just for grammatical correctness of how that type of um, structure is used in the document. So, but I think I was the lone person who thought that it um, only applied to the commission. Um, no, I, I agree with that. I think the only issue then is if, if that is removed, then we still need to address the, the manual that applies to all the other boards. And, and that's where I had the issue. I think um, that other manual that we have that applies to, and I can't remember what the official title is, but I think we need to revisit that um, to deal with those issues. That was my only yeah. issue. That sounds good to me. Okay. Um, and then without seeing other hands right now, the other question was um, my, my memory of the discussion about the um, agenda and the um, consent agenda was mainly to make sure that we pulled items from the agenda so that staff knew which items would be pulled and people in the audience would know what items would be pulled before they sat there till the end of the meeting. I didn't, I didn't read that as moving the whole consent agenda to the front of the meeting, but I may have heard that wrong. I think we said that we would consider that on a case by case basis. Tonight's a perfect example. We just had minutes. So it seemed to me that it would be expedient and help move the meeting along if we went ahead and just approved that and there were no objections. Other times it might not be appropriate for us to make that change. I, I think I would like to make sure we have the option um, depending on the specific circumstances. So the item the item on the agenda where we normally address it is the um, adoption of the agenda, correct? Right, so we could address would, it there. Re recommend keeping that the same. Um, Commissioner Lyle Smith. Yes, um, I thought we were moving it, but but it was because we were essentially addressing the consent agenda at the moment we were addressing the adoption of the agenda. So I thought that, that that was the reason we moved it was because we were pulling things off the consent. And so therefore the only thing left on the consent should be stuff that we're just consenting to. So. <laughs> um, City manager, Conkle. Yeah, that's what I thought too, commissioner, or sorry, <laughs> City manager. I didn't mean to clap. I was trying to raise. I was like, <laughs> he's celebrating. He's raising. I wasn't he's celebrating there. <laughs> um, I, I think. I think part of the discussion was that um, you know, if we if we at the at the adoption of the agenda, we're going to pull things off consent. Then we were going to place them onto general business, right? At that point, the consent should be good to go, and so we could just adopt it right then at that point with either as is as uh, as a, the original agenda with nothing pulled or I want to pull um, 7C and put it in as 9, 9D. Um, now we can move the, to approve the consent. Um, I think from someone sitting in the audience or uh, folks who have things on the consent agenda, even I think it would just it would it would give them the 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 sense and ease to go okay they've approved the consent agenda I can I can call it a night at this point um, instead of sticking around till the end I think that was part of the conversation. Okay, so the way that it will appear on the agenda would be um, the actual consent agenda would be written there with the um, adoption of the agenda. Is that the way we're going to write it? We would have item six, adoption of the agenda. Item seven would be consent agenda. So during item number six, you could either pull something and or or not. And then just if we adopt the agenda as is, we'd roll into seven. We'd have a motion to approve the consent agenda, second vote, and then we'd move on from there. All right, sounds good. Um, 
Any other comments, questions, Commissioner McGriff? Yeah, so originally when we started looking at this, uh, Commission President Smith, we had talked about what we were going to use to apply to other boards and commissions and committees, because I think that we need something. I, I am trying to look at it from the standpoint of what are the unintended consequences, and we have had maybe one or two since I've been on the commission that have caused me some angst, and we, I wasn't sure which standards we were supposed to use, so I'm, um, I am for leaving that in there until we get something to replace it, because if we take it out and there's nothing to replace it and something happens, not that I want something to happen, but I just want to be prepared. So I would, I would appreciate some, some uh, comments from Mr. Conkle about code of conduct or whatever other documents we have that would apply to other boards and commissions, committees, anything that we, anything that comes under the big umbrella of, of the city of Oregon City. I think this gets back to some of the, the, the discussion the commission was having. Um, we've got under boards and committees, the boards and commissions orientation manual that lays out quite a bit of, um, you know, Oregon City form of government, commission attorney relationship, guidelines and duties for elected officials, policy making. So um, I, I, I tend to agree that it feels like the commission's what you're reviewing tonight is really specific to the city commission. Now, if, you know, I think, I think some additional work is probably necessary to see if there's a disconnect or how the boards and commission orientation manual plays into the city commission. I'm feeling relatively comfortable that that orientation manual and what it spells out is applicable um, to the other boards, commissions, and committees um, in the city. I'm not sure, you know, without going through each section, it's, um, you know, serving on a board or a commission, terms of office, budget committee, CIC, HRB, library board, enhancement grant, natural resource, PRAC, planning commission, South Fork, uh, transportation advisory committee, urban renewal committee, um, or renewal commission. So it seems to be implying that it's applicable to those. Well, yeah, and I was just nervous. Sorry. I was going to raise my hand to talk to myself. Um, <laughs> so here's, here's, here's the, here's the thing. Um, so, you know, if, if what we're talking about tonight applies to the commission, the other manual we still need to address. But my understanding when we created the other manual was that other manual not only applied to all city commissions and boards, but also to the city commission. And what I found was interesting in that investigation that we did, it was, it was very much told to us that the appearance of it in the investigator's mind is that that did not apply to the commission. Um, I was one of the people that helped create it the, on the commission at the time. So I know that the intention of that manual was to apply to all of the committees and the commission itself. So um, if we ever, you know, when we bring that manual back up and go through it, I think we need to clarify that and, and we need to make sure that whatever we approve tonight is coincides with that manual as well. Um, commission, uh, Katie, perfectly clear. Hold, hold on, Katie. I just wanted to make a statement that I can bring the boards and commissions manual back before the city commission, and we can definitely state in there who this what who this manual applies to. So we can definitely make a statement at the beginning saying that all of these boards and committees and the city commission will abide by this manual. And why can't we make that statement right now so that it goes forward, period? I, 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 want to, I, I don't want the situation as that Commissioner Smith, Rocky Smith just pointed out that we thought what it meant, we, were, we knew what it meant, but somebody else didn't really believe us and caused a lot of problems. So I thought that it applied to everybody. I suppose, Bill, would it be a problem if they amended the existing um, um, sorry, I lost my 
the boards and commission like connection, the boards and um, well, I, I'm, what I'm wondering is if they adopt, if they, if the resolution adopting the fifth amendment to the city commission rules, if they were to put in there that the boards and commissions orientation manual um, is applicable to the city commission. Sure, um, you can do that either by amending these, you know, the current, the, the document you have in front of you, the, the commission rules of procedure to include a statement, uh, you know, um, somewhere in there and we can try to locate it or we could amend that document itself to, to state that it's applicable. Perhaps the best way to do it is here. The question is where, and do we want to, you know, I'm always loathe to, to make sort of new things I, I, at the dais. Just, you know, this is relatively simple, but exactly where to place it um, in a way that would make sense, um, you know, could be problematic. So we can do it tonight, but unless there's a pressing matter, I'd prefer to suggest we come back with a, a, a revised version. I think it'd be I think it'd be helpful to come back because I'm sure I don't remember Commissioner S President Smith how exactly that orientation manual was adopted. We would do a little bit of research, you know, if it was adopted by resolution by the commission. I, I just I don't know the whole backstory or history of right. how that was implemented. Can you put the resolution up? Yes, I will put the resolution up. Thank you. Commissioner Smith, I'm sorry. Yeah, go ahead. If while well, we're waiting, can you can you clarify? Maybe you remember. Or somebody remembers which document exactly you you feel that the investigator said didn't apply. I thought she said it applied, but it there wasn't any legal action or anything that could be taken. But no, she specifically said that that board's manual did not apply to the commission. The orientation. Um, the I, what? What is the it's, title of it? It's the boards and commissions orientation manual. I just don't know how she could say that when Chapter Nine talks about the commission goals, procedures, and legalities. But it's pretty clear to me. <laughs> Well, she basically, I, my memory was, and I'd have to watch the uh, meeting, but if that's mm -hmm. fair, but my memory was it was the word boards and that the commission wasn't a board. That's the, my memory of it, but I could be wrong. No, you're not wrong. She semantically differentiated between boards, committees, commissions, and all kinds. Of, right. So it missed the intent of what you had done before. Right. Yeah. Clean it up. Okay, Commissioner McGrath, what were you looking yeah, for? I was, I was saying I concur with what Commissioner O'Donnell said. That's exactly what she said. Yep. And you were furious about it, and the rest of us were as well. So, would it, would it, does it, so I guess two questions. One, does the changes that you see before you in the proposed amendments, do those seem um, accurate and um, address what your concerns are? And then the second question would be would you like us to come back? We can propose um, language that can be added as well as attach the board's and commission's orientation manual uh, so that you have a chance to look through it to make sure you have no questions about that document before you adopt it as part of your rules of procedure. I don't think putting a, a section two in the resolution is going to prevent us from making changes to it. And I, my, my feeling is I'd rather have it done sooner than later. It's a simple sentence that we also, so, you know, we also say that this new doc, that other document applies to the to the commission as well. It's it's that simple. It's just one sentence. Yeah, it could actually be in parentheses at the end of that paragraph. These provisions also apply to all whatever. I understand Rachel Al Smith's conviction that this is a specific document to commission, but I know we're all reacting to what we experienced during that investigation. So, whatever is the best way to do it. Katie. I 
I would um, prefer if we could uh, approve this resolution tonight and then come back with any edits or changes to it. And the reason why I would ask that is just because at the last couple of meetings, we've changed the agenda around to meet the criteria that's in this rules of procedure. It would be nice if we go ahead and approve it and establish the agenda moving forward so that it appears that way when it first comes out to the public. And then if there's just a sentence that we need to come back and make an edit um, to get approval from the commission in this rules of procedure and bring the boards and commissions manual back with that um, and put a sentence in there as well, I would, um, I would prefer to do that um, if we could approve this tonight, please. Okay, I'm okay with that, but we need a motion. We can move to approve resolution number 21-09, adoption of the Fifth Amendment to the City Commission Rules of Procedure. Second. Okay, Katie. All right, Commissioner Denise McGriff. Abstain. Commissioner Rachel Lau Smith. Aye. Commissioner Frank O'Donnell. Aye. Commissioner or Commission President Rocky Smith. Aye. Motion passes. And then this will the rest of it will become on our next agenda. Including this uh, item we just asked about and the, whatever the other rules and procedures are. Let's get that cleaned up post haste. Right. So my understanding is we'll come back with language that implements the boards and commissions orientation manual into the resolution that was just approved and then include that orientation manual as an exhibit for the commission review. Okay. Yeah. All right. Um, I mean, I'd like to have at least a chance to look at it before I, before I make a decision about it. I'm... All right. Sorry. Um, no, no problem. Any other comments or Okay. All right. So we, we already went, we already passed or um, um, accepted the consent agenda. So we have communications. Uh, city manager. Um, thank you. I do not have any uh, updates for tonight. Thank you. Okay. Commissioners. Nobody. I'm sorry. <laughs> Commissioner McGrath. Yes, um, on uh, uh, Tuesday afternoon, uh, staff member Dana Webb and myself participated in the uh, site tour of the Oregon City Westland Ped and Bike Concept Plan, Bridge Concept Plan. Uh, it was uh, very nice to see everybody in person, uh, albeit distancing six feet apart. And uh, we had presentations by one of the bridge engineers talking about bridge history. We had Bryce Edwards from the uh, Grand Ron talking about the pre 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 history, you know, going back 5 million years. We had a brief discussion by Andrew uh, from the trust. We had uh, Troy um, from the Willamette Falls Heritage Foundation talking about the locks. I gave a little brief history about our downtown, uh, the founding by Dr. McLaughlin and a little bit of history about Robin's Nest, our neighbors to the other side of the bridge. Uh, we had a beautiful day in between the showers. It worked out really well. I think there's still a lot of questions about uh, landings. Um, I myself walked part of McLaughlin Boulevard looking at some of the possible locations where they were talking about um, as, as many of you know, I'm still a um, little on the fence. I asked for some additional information, um, which I received, but it wasn't quite, I asked for the, the um, assessment from 2016 uh, that they stated gave them the impetus to move this project forward. And I, I haven't seen that yet. It was another memo dated two days ago that seemed to address that. We had good participation from um, Oregon City folks uh, in addition to that um, meeting, uh, we will again be meeting. Um, I also had a meeting with the uh, Region 1 manager and um, Counselor Mary Baumgartner from West Lynn just to talk about our concerns. And you know, it was one of those questions where they said, well, we've given you all this information. 
what do you think? And uh, <laughs> we both stated that uh, we felt that there were certain problems associated with the entire closure of the bridge that would have a significant and detrimental impact on not only West Lynn, but Oregon City. So we kind of left it at that and talked about some of the landings. The nice thing is you should know is that um, we do have a, an ally. Mary lived in Oregon City before she moved to West Lynn. So she is very familiar with our downtown. She's very familiar with some of the access ways, which I think really gives her sort of a leg up on um, uh, anybody else they could have chosen to be the representative on that on that group. And I'm, I'm uh, uh, real happy to, to be able to partner with her on, on that particular project. So we'll, we will continue to talk um, informally about just concepts and ideas and getting feedback from our community members. That is uh, the only two meetings that I've had since our last meeting and our retreat. Um, I might say just in communications that um, I certainly appreciated the participation that we had and the, um, the uh, candor uh, and uh, honesty that we had over that session and, and talking about things. And I'm looking very much forward to us moving forward to the next step. But I wanted to just thank the staff and my fellow commissioners for all the heavy lifting we did. Um, Commissioner Lyle Smith. Thank you. Um, so I will um, miss our work session next week. So I thought I should go ahead and mention um, I did attend the C4 subcommittee meeting where the, the rest of the Clackamas County representatives heard a presentation from ODOT on the, the same exact project, the um, Oregon City Westland bike ped uh, project. Um, just some, some good discussion there around the table. Um, similar comments uh, from what we had here in our own commission chambers. Um, and uh, one of the documents that I requested, it sounded like ODOT had done some studies is, uh, regarding demographics and who used the bridge and that they had a, a public involvement plan. And those were all um, pieces of information that I hadn't seen yet. And I went to their, their website and to our page and I couldn't find those. So um, those were sent out to us, which I forwarded to you all. So, um, anyway, just kind of highlighting that information, but um, thanks to Commissioner McGriff for, for working on that, um, that project. It's, it's one of a lot of interest, I think, by our community. Um, I did want to um, thank John Lewis um, and his uh, group for following through for the Holcomb Boulevard um, speed study that ODOT performed. Um, I... Uh, I, I know that was, we were trying to be patient with ODOT and it was a long time coming to have them study Holcomb Boulevard. We've heard a lot from that community regarding safety issues and safety concerns. So um, I was happy to see that uh, we finally heard back from ODOT on that and um, the speed limit was lowered just a tad to 35 mile an hour. Um, I can tell you, I live right off of um, Myers Road and it's 35 mile an hour and I don't and, and it still feels fast as a pedestrian. Um, and I could tell you, I stand there even at a, at a crosswalk with painted lines crosswalk, I'm just trying to cross the street and half the time nobody stops. So there, there definitely are safety issues. So I really appreciate, um, I guess I'm getting older because I appreciate you slowing the speed down. That must be a sign that I'm getting old. Um, <laughs> but I just want to give some thanks to Mr. Lewis and probably Dana and, and your team for following through on that. <laughs> Um, and the last but not least, I'll say, um, I thought the retreat went really well. Um, I thought we covered a lot of ground. It was hard to do, you know, lots of time on Zoom. So for those that were out there that stuck with us, um, you know, thanks, thanks for, for listening in. Um, there's more to come. We have more work to do on it. Um, but I think uh, we have a lot of good consensus on um, key items uh, that we need to move forward. So it's all good work. Thanks. Commissioner O'Donnell? Not tonight, thank you. <laughs> um, and I don't have anything um, other than thanking everyone for the um, uh, goals retreat. That was, um, yeah, it was a lot 
And, um, but I think we covered a lot and I'm excited um, about what is in the future, a lot on our plate. Um, I wanna remind everyone that we are going um, after this meeting into an executive session of the city commission. It'll be held virtually immediately following the regular meeting. Um, this is pursuant to ORS 192.6602H to consult with legal counsel concerning the rights and duties of a public body with regard to current litigation or litigation likely to be filed. Um, and let's, I don't know, let's say, well, you know, five minutes or so, a little bit more. Um, and we have um, a separate link for that. So we'll see you at that meeting in five minutes or six.